Okay, you, you would have... Uh, oh, good morning first. Lah. Good morning. Well, all right. You would have noted that uh, the order of service is a little bit different. Uh, we only sang uh, three songs because we have started our prayer foundation. The launch is today. And so we will have some time. We'll take some time to pray uh, later on. Okay, so uh, today's uh, order will be as such. Uh, and uh, prayer foundations-wise, uh, we would have heard, those of you here last week would have heard that SP talked about uh, Jubilee. And the theme is Jubilee and what Jubilee means and uh, to invoke on Jubilee's blessings for all of us. Okay, so today uh, is no different. So recap a little bit. So last week, you heard SP talk, uh, spoke that Jubilee is a divine and compelling call for all people. That Jubilee is for all people, not only for some special people, not only for staff, uh, it's for all people uh, in LSBC. He also shared that uh, we are called not only to consecrate ourselves. Consecration-wise, uh, every year we do a bit, lah, right? We, we, we do that. But what's the difference between Jubilee and uh, non-Jubilee years is that we consecrate. The call is to consecrate the year, to set it apart as holy. And then lastly, he shared that in 2024, 2024 is to meant to be lived uh, joyfully. That is supposed to be lived up as a joyful year. 2024, a joyful year. So that's what SP shared. And since we are supposed to live out uh, jubilee in accordance to what the Scripture says, Let's familiarize ourselves with the Scriptures. Let's read Leviticus 25, verses 10 to 14 together. Okay, so you see on the screen, we shall read it together. One, two, three. And you shall consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you, and each of you shall return to his possession and each of you shall return to his family. The fifth year shall be a jubilee to you. In it, you shall neither sow nor reap what grows on its own accord, nor gather the grapes of your untended vine, for it is the jubilee. It shall be holy to you, and you shall eat its produce from the field. In this year of jubilee, each of you shall return to his possession, and if you sell anything to your neighbour or buy anything from your neighbour's hands, you shall not oppress one another. Let's pray. Lord, we want to thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you that, Lord, you will watch to perform your word. And we thank you, Father, that this is a jubilee year for uh, LSBC, as we read of the Scriptures and we try to apply it in our life, Father, we pray that You will open up our spiritual eyes and ears to begin to understand what You have in store for us in this wonderful year. And right now, God, even as the Word of God is being shared, we pray, O oh God, that You prepare our hearts, that our hearts will be good soil, and Lord, that uh, as the seed is planted, that it will grow and it will bear fruit. We commit this time into Your hands, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. So you see, it's about Jubilee. And just now, the way I talk, it's like I believe with my heart and with conviction uh, that Jubilee is good and uh, all of Jubilee's blessings all that allow us for us to claim, right? But now I will make a confession, which I made for service already to SP. I told him that actually, uh, don't really believe la. okay uh, though some parts uh, cannot comprehend I'll explain to you why I'll explain to you why say come on like the verse says don't sow and reap for three years how is that possible especially in busy Singapore how right okay then the other part that uh, don't fully comprehend is uh, is the property one or the property one okay you buy property only to return after a few years. Return back to the original owners. Okay. Then, I know the people who own two, three, four properties here. Uh, so, not very good, right? Okay. So, this part also don't really 
uh, comprehend. Okay, I can't really comprehend. And then, uh, of course, the last bit, uh, because Jubilee uh, uh, is once in 50 years. So I tell myself, never mind, like, this part of scriptures, don't really understand, don't really comprehend, never mind. It happens only once in 50 years. So it's not going to affect me that, uh, uh, that much. La. Once in a lifetime, question mark a bit, and after move on already. Okay, so when the leadership started talking about Jubilee a few months back when we were preparing for this year, well, the part about celebrations, the celebrating of God's goodness, uh, that part I can identify with. Because why? God really has done really amazing things in LSBC throughout that 50 years. So that part I'm excited about, celebrating of God's goodness. But I was not too sure how I can internalize it, the spiritual significance, how to internalize it, and how to apply it for 2024. Okay? Celebration can. All right? The rest, uh, uh, question mark, question mark, question mark. So, not too sure about it as yet. Um, but of course, being leader, good, good thing is then I got to uh, do earlier. Someone kind of arrow to preach. Okay? When you preach, uh, got to meditate, got to ask God to, to draw down something. So God then began to deal with my heart, began to show me a few things about the Scriptures. I believe, then I began to realise that Jubilee can be more than just a celebration. I realised that Jubilee, actually, it's about our faith in God. Alright? The faith in God and the belief that God can do everything He has promised even though it does not make sense to the mind, okay, it does not make sense to our experience, but God can do everything He has promised. So it's also about our trust in God that we need not strive. Okay? As you live the, 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 your normal routines, your days, all that, so much things to worry about, so many things to care for, so many things to handle. So we must trust that we need not strive because God is in control. We need not be, uh, strive to be in control or make things happen the way the world tells you that it should happen. It's the trust that God is in control and that He will do things according to His pattern. Not according to the pattern of the world, but according to His pattern, according to His way, which is a higher way. It dawned on me that the blessings of Jubilee can only come to pass if we truly believe that God is more than enough. That God is more than enough. It is not a logical thing. It is not a practical thing. It is a God thing. And only God can fulfill it. Only God can fulfill it. So how will then our life look like if we truly believe that God is more than enough? What decisions will we make? Will we dare to make changes to our home, to our work, to our schools, to our church, maybe in church as well? Will we dare to make adjustments to our finances, our relationship? and our life routines. Maybe in this jubilee, we can truly believe that God, God is more than enough. And we can therefore see God fulfill His promises for us individually and corporately in the church. Now, to truly believe that God is more than enough is to believe in the Scriptures, okay? Which is why we will dive into the Scriptures and to follow them. We cannot want the blessings because a lot of time when we read we think this blessing is good, that blessing is good, we say amen. Then after that, uh, in our mind, we just hop a few, uh, a a few sentences because the requirements part not so good. Like, so you hop and you pray the promises, you ignore the requirements. So cannot, okay? So cannot, therefore, we need to talk about the requirements of which SP have shared last week already. First requirement, consecrate the year to the Lord, Okay? Leviticus 25 verse 10 says, and you shall consecrate the 50th year. We read this just now. And uh, verse 12, for it is the jubilee. You sh it shall be holy, holy to you. So what does consecrate and to be holy means? It means uh, the meaning of consecration is the act of dedicating 
yourself to the service and worship of God. And to be holy is to be set apart, to set apart, to be set apart from, uh, to be different, to be distinct from anything that is common. All right? To be set apart, to be different, to be distinct from common things, things that are common, the common routines. Therefore, to consecrate the year is to be to set apart the year for a higher purpose, which is God's purpose as an act of worship. I believe it is for us to decide that the year should be different and distinct from a common year. Verse 10 says, you shall consecrate. All right, so only you can do it. Nobody can do that for you because the year has been given to you. It's yours and it's for you to give it up to God, to set it apart up to God. So as I reflect on how I've been living my life, because it's a time of reflection, the phrase, it, uh, jubilee shall be holy to you, spoke to me. Well, the thing is this, I do love God, I, I say, okay, I, I do love God. And then it's, uh, okay, stop once again. I want to say it's passionate about serving God and God's people. But the word passionate, uh, sometimes get stuck. Yeah. Because uh, as I think through my life, uh, the word say passionate, but the action not so passionate. All right? And actually, that is with us also. Uh, okay? We love God. Frankly, I tell you, I love God. But just not wholeheartedly. And that's with us a lot of the time. We are inconsistent, all right? Certainly not wholehearted. And I've allowed common things in my life, right? Common things in my life to distract, okay? And sometimes beyond distracting us, I have allowed common things in my life to dominate my life, dominate my routines. So let me share with you some of my reflections, okay? I put it down. So a uh, basic spiritual disciplines have been neglected and have taken, been taken over by busy life routines. Okay, how many of you identify? Rest, rest has been replaced by recreation like Netflix, Disney Plus, exercise or feasting. Okay, when I wrote this, my wife said, where got exercise? Only got feasting. Okay, so I say we complement one another. She exercises, I feast. Okay, that is good. All right, so exercise, feasting, yeah, but there are recreation, but not a lot of rest. Then something which I'm passionate or uh, that means quite a lot to me, which is missions, missions involvement, has been stopped because I'm worried, I'm concerned, I'm totally engaged in work, many things to do many things to do at work, work commitments. And finally, my God-given dreams and visions have faded away as I strive to make life better for myself and my loved ones. Where God dreams and visions? Okay? When I talk about dreams, uh, it's horizontal dreams uh, when, when I'm in a horizontal position and when I talk about vision, it's television. <laughs> okay? So those things with time is not as important anymore. So it fades away. That's my life, my reflection. So I've largely accepted that we must conform to the realities of life. It's like that one. Ah. Life is like that. And all that I've been doing is good enough. What? A temporary meeting, come for service, go to sell faithfully. Quite good already. All right. My friends don't even do it. And my friends don't even do it faithfully. Also, good enough already. But then as I reflect, what is life? if it is governed by busy routines and work commitments only? How can we find true satisfaction if we are constantly striving and striving, worrying and worrying? And how we, can we have a fulfilling life journey if we cannot even find rest? We can't even find rest. We humans are adaptable. So we make the best of what has been given to us, what life has thrown at us, and we accept. But should we accept that these are just reality, realities in life, life's reality? Can we accept that? It's like that one, nah. it's like that, okay? We've got no choice, what? What more do you want? Okay, we make the best of life, okay? So as I reflect on what Jubilee means to me, I say that I want 
it to be more than just a celebration for the church. It's not about looking back at how good God is, which God, God has been very good. But Jubilee, to me, that is an orientation. It's an opportunity for us to orientate, to correct our bearing such that the future, okay, for this year, 2024, and beyond, as we correct our bearing, that God can bring up so much more for us, for the year and beyond, okay? That's what I want for Jubilee. I want God to help me calibrate my bearing, all right? I want Jubilee to be more, and I know it starts with consecration, consecrating the year to God and setting it apart. But what does consecrating the year looks like to me, okay? If, if you see, most, most years, this, this is like resolution, New Year resolution. Uh. I've given up writing down resolution already. Why? Write down beginning of year, end of year, you take up, look up. KAPI never meet. Okay? Most of the time, good intentions, but nothing done, very uh, little done at the end of the year. I've given up. But this year, I felt that for Jubilee, as God calls, right, it is a call to action. So, bopin, no choice. I think God wants me to write it down. And so, I wrote it down. Worse still, now write it down and show it to all of you. So, end of the year, you can ask me whether I fulfilled already or not. Okay? So, four points also. First, then, is to reinstate. Reinstate spiritual discipline so that God, God can be at the centre of my life for 2024. All right? Small things. No need big things. A lot of time, it is the small things that counts also. Spiritual discipline, reinstated. Next, to enter into God's rest. Jesus promised in Matthew eleven twenty eight, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. I want to experience that. In preparing for this message, as this verse came, I realised that sometimes we equate rest with physical rest only. Alright? We want a holiday, we want a public holiday, we want a vacation, we wanted rest. But as this verse shows, and what God shows me, is that it's not only rest that God wants to give you, it's restedness. What it means by restedness is that there is an absence, the avoidance of strife, trying, 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 worrying, 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 getting more or pushing forward, that posture that prevents you from getting the rest that God intends you. When you believe that God is more than enough, there is an assurance that God will take care. And because God will take care, there is a rest. You have entered into God's rest. So that part is another sermon. I shan't talk more, okay? Then the third point, I, to be involved in the Great Commission once again. I said that I, I, uh, it's of value to me. It's just that with time, with time, I got no time. And those are excuses I shall not use anymore. I've got no time for missions. I've got not enough leave. And I've got too much work. All those excuses I'm trying to put aside. So I'm going to set aside a certain period of time uh, for missions. Okay? No need to be missionary. I'm not calling you to be missionaries. But just be involved. And a lot of time, you think that you're going out there to bless people. But when you're out there, you realise that the people, the simple the poor, they bless you even more. Because why? God will use them to bless you. So, that's what I wanted. So, to be involved in Great Commission again, all right? And then point D, to revisit the dreams and visions that God has given me and allow God to revive them, okay? Actually, a, a lot of time, you know, because we have got so many author calls, this and that, right? So, a lot of time, God ignite, okay? But then, when I walk out of here, uh, I... Blow, blow it because why? Uh, sometimes too difficult. All right, uh, there are too many things to do. We allow things, things uh, in our lives, all that to extinguish whatever spark that the Lord would want to ignite as well. But this year, no more. I want to revisit them. We are constantly doing all this resolution every year, but I want this year to be special. I pray that the Lord, our God, would take jubilee and to do a reset, a reset in my life so that I would live for a higher purpose, a purposeful year, a meaningful year. I do not want to miss out on this opportunity. And right now, I am inviting you, 
all of you to join me so that we can see God fulfill His promises in your lives, in my life for 2024. Let us not miss this opportunity for God to fulfill His promises for our lives. And let us start the year right by consecrating the year to the Lord. Okay, that's a commandment in the word, to the Lord. So that is point one, that we should consecrate Jubilee year to the Lord and it shall be holy to you. Now, consecration, uh, consecration usually done with the law, giving up and surrendering, uh, right? Okay, so does con a consecrated year means uh, through the year surrendering and giving up and therefore lots of crying and lots of uh, tears because why? It's about surrendering, putting on the altar, laying down on the altar. But then, I also thought, as P said, this will be a joyful year. Eh? Okay. How does it compute? Surrendering, giving up, crying, all that, with a joyful year. So this part, uh, I, I was trying to make sense of it. Okay. And then, when I thought about the passage, go back to the passage again, right? So everybody, the passage says, everybody return to their land, right? Just now I thought of you about land, land owners already. Uh. So the poor, very happy, right? Then the rich, uh, the rich are uh, not so happy, right? Because giving up, all right? The poor, uh, the, the, the land must be returned. And I was thinking about it also, that farming activity, uh, they got no sowing, no sowing, no reaping. So farming activity stopped. Farm hands very happy. Okay. Farm owners not so happy, correct? Why? Because no income, uh, loss of income. Uh, it cannot be generated. So, not everybody very happy. I can imagine lots of people happy, but some people not so happy because there is a price to pay for Jubilee. And then, I thought about it, Singaporean quite rich. Okay, okay, not rich. We are not rich. Uh, most of us are well-to-do only. Okay? Then, does that mean then there is some surrendering and giving up to do? All right. Should we be joyful about that? And that is why we must not see Jubilee from the world's perspective. Okay? It cannot be comprehended by the world using the world perspective because it's a God thing. It's a God thing and God, only God can fulfill it and therefore we must look at it from God's perspective. It requires us to fulfill then the second requirement, I will list down the second requirement and I felt that it is about oppression or freedom from oppression. What's the correlation between oppression and joy? Well, oppression is one major cause of misery and suffering for the people in the world. Agree? That oppression is one of the major cause of misery and suffering in the world. So, freedom and oppression will bring tremendous joy to us and freedom from oppression will bring tremendous joy to the people that are around us, to many people. And that is a second requirement for Jubilee, for uh, God's people in the Jubilee year. Verses 13 to 14 says that, In this year of Jubilee, each of you shall return to his possession. And if you sell anything to your neighbour or buy anything from your neighbour's hands, you shall not oppress one another. Okay? Say after me, you shall not oppress one another. Say, one, two, three. Go. Say it like you mean it. Now. Okay? One, two, three. Go. Alright, verses 17. Or verse 17 says this again. Therefore, you shall not oppress one another, but you shall fear your God, for I am the Lord, your God. So according to this verse, we should not oppress one another in Jubilee because God says that I am the Lord, your God. I am your God. So you should not oppress one another. And this verse is in line with the first requirement, which is to set it apart as holy. It belongs to God. It's God-centered, all right? And then verse 17 also says that we should do it because of the fear of God, that we should fear Him. But I want to add one more perspective, which is that it is not only about our fear of God, it is also because of our, fear, our faith, our faith in God. 
Because why? From the beginning, I've already said that if we truly believe that God is more than enough, then why is there a need to enter into oppression mode? <clears throat> you win, I lose, in order to get what we want. If we truly believe that God is more than enough, we need not, we need not oppress one another in order to get what we want. We should be liberated, okay? So say after me, God is more than enough for me. Hey, not everybody say, and you say, you must say like you mean it, I huh? really, really mean it. God is more than enough for me. Okay. Amen. Okay. All right. So I do not want you to go away thinking then that Jubilee is about me because I talk a lot about how God deals with us, God deals with me. I've also shared in requirement, one, in requirement one that the focus of Jubilee is God. It is God-centric. And as for requirement two, God then wants us to be others-centered. God-centric, all right, with Him first. And because God-centric, then He will download to us that His heart is for the others, all right? Not only for us, He cares for us, but He cares for others as well. He does not want us to oppress exploit or take advantage of other people. To put it simply, he wants us to love. I've read in an article somewhere that all oppression occurs because there's an absence of love. Okay? Oppression occurs because of an absence of love. And I agree. So Jubilee should be a year of great love. Jubilee is a year of great love and out of that love, we will bring forth great joy to those who are around us, our family, our loved ones, our colleagues, people that are around us. And as a church collectively, we, out of that great love, we will bring tremendous joy, I believe, to then the community. Okay? Because it is a posture that we take. We trust God and through that, the, the love of God comes and the love of us God will cause us to take action to bring joy to the community. That's the second requirement. And if you read beyond verse 17, you will see that the Lord has very specific instructions, very specific instructions on how we should treat the poor, the vulnerable, the vulnerable, the poor, and the needy. We call it the VPN. We call it as the VPN. Because these people are prone to being exploited. These people are prone to being oppressed. Okay. And as part of Jubilee, I believe that God wants us to show great love, great love to the VPN, individually, as individuals, and then collectively as a church. Okay, to show great love and to bring great joy to those that are around us. Do you know that the VPN has a very special place in God's heart? Proverbs 19, 17 says this, Whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord and He will repay him for his deeds. Okay? Who are we to lend to God? But His Word says so. That we lend to God, we lend to God when we give to the poor. And Jubilee is a good time to lend to the Lord. Because why? He paid dividends during Jubilee. Okay? Good dividends. And He doesn't, He's not a debtor or man. Okay? That God, as we give, then God will give more and enable us to be a blessing to those who are around us. Okay? So, I've shared with you the two requirements and i shared with you my reflections. Okay? But don't just listen to me because Jubilee is to different people, different things. So, right now, I'm going to invite two members of the church to come up and share with regards to what Jubilee means for them and their family. Help me welcome Matthias and Cynthia, please. Okay, Matthias, Cynthia. All right, would you like to introduce yourself first? Uh, yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Matthias, and this is my wife, Cynthia. And together, we have two boys, a uh, super cool 13-year-old Cohen, who is seated down there, and a 9-year-old uh, Liam, uh, who is at Children's Church right now. So we have been attending LSVC for quite some years now, and so we are very excited to be here today. Yep. So this, mo this morning, he also shared share like that, but then... SP told me yesterday, 
Oh, I carry them since babies. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So they've been here all their life, okay? They have been here all their life. Give a hand, uh, give a uh, encouragement to them for those uh, who have been here for all their life, okay? Totally committed. Uh, okay. So then, okay, uh, what is the significance of Jubilee to you and your family? Come, share with the people. I think for us, Jubilee is all about restoration, uh, restoring that which has been lost so that we can be made whole again. So coming into 2024, we basically ask ourselves the question, what have we lost as a family that we are trusting God to want to bring about revival again uh, in this new year? Um, and it's really restoration, not just for our sake of our enjoyment, but restoration so that we can live God-centric lives, uh, as preached about by SP last week. So when we were thinking about it, I think it was really two things. Number one, it was the restoration of the family altar, um, being able to revive our daily devotions as a family. So, you know, when growing up, when the kids were young, we used to have daily Bible readings with them, prayer times with them, but as we got busy and as we got lazy, uh, it became more and more infrequent uh, along the years. But at the start of this year, we were really convicted and challenged uh, to really revive um, family devotions on a daily basis again. So since the start of 2024, what we will do is immediately after dinner, before we start all our favourite family activities like homework and things here, right? We will, we will quickly get the tables cleared, clear all the, uh, table, the table, take out the Bibles and we'll do a simple devotion together. And so we keep it really simple. Uh, it will be one passage of reading, which is usually one chapter. Uh, right now, we are doing the book of Acts. We started in the book of Acts. And then a time where we go around the table to just share uh, what part of the passage spoke to us or what's one thing that you have learned from the passage and then a time of prayer together. And it's really encouraging because you'll find that uh, the kids can really get engaged with the Word of God. Uh, they will start asking lots of questions like, what does this mean? What does that mean? The other day, one of our kids was asking, what is circumcision and things like that? Yeah. So, like, deep questions, right? Like, things that you are thinking about. So, it's really, really encouraging to be able to uh, see them engage uh, with the Word of God. So, that's one of the things that we have started this year. Yeah, you see, so sometimes now, uh, we don't do that with them. Number one is because we sometimes think things are more important. Uh. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we don't mean it. But sometimes in actions, we, we show it now, we demonstrate it. That's how they catch from us, what is important. Okay? Sometimes, the second reason why sometimes we don't do it is because, not so that they won't ask us difficult questions like, what is circumcision? Uh? I mean, uh, you know, some of the difficult things. Okay? We rather, like, sometimes we rather the teachers tell, teach them things. Then in Sunday school or children church, they, Sunday school will handle some of this as well. Like. It's not our job. It's, we outsource it. Okay? Singaporeans love outsourcing. We outsource it. Okay? But anyway, never mind. <laughs> yeah, I think another a second area um, we want to recover that we have lost is a, a heart for uh, compassion for the vulnerable, the poor, the needy. So we reflected that we actually devote a lot of effort to, to think for ourselves, how do we have a more comfortable life for ourselves, for our kids. After we help them to pass this subject, then we think, oh my gosh, now let's help them to continue to pass. After they do a bit better, let's think about, oh my gosh, now they experience success. How do we help them to keep on being successful? There's no end to our worry of protecting what we have. Um, this year, we want to have a, a giving plan. So to preferably seek God about who does He want us to give financially to. So we do not just plan for our children, plan for our, our future, but we also plan to give. Another area that, um, besides financially, I also feel quite challenged to give our time and to give our presence uh, as a family to a community our, that is uh, not our own. And um, very, um, what, what struck me was, um, you know, in, in John chapter 1, verse 14, it says that Jesus was the Word that became flesh um, and, and dwelt among us. So he didn't just come and give his life to save the world, but he also came to live, live among us and be with us. So I feel like this year, I want to find a chance to, to be, uh, go on a mission trip and to be among the poor, the, 
the vulnerable to, to experience and to feel what is the Father's heart for them. What is it about them that God loves so much in the poor, the widow and the orphan? And I believe it will be, it will be very life, life and heart-changing for us. Um, I'm going to share a little story. Last September, end of last September, so I asked I asked Cohen, you know, jokingly, say, Cohen, if I go on a one-month mission trip, you know, during your holidays, will you come with me? And, you know, he didn't say no. Well, his first question is, is it safe? And he take out his handphone and he'll start to Google and he'll tell me, oh my gosh, mom, are there guns here? What's the crime rate here? Are there earthquakes? But after that, he just said, oh, how about we try two weeks? You know, mom, we got to start small. You cannot expect me to just go from zero to one month. Yeah, I was really encouraged by that. I think we are, our, our, our children are more uh, ready, you know, to love the Lord and to obey. And as parents, we really must take the lead. We must lead the way. Yeah. So these are the, these are the areas. Um, as Matt said, you know, restoration of our heart. Be more willing to say yes to God. Like all that we have, you know, God say the land belongs to me. All that we have really belongs to God. And, and to, to ask Him, uh, who do you want to give things to? Who do you want us to go to, towards? I, I, I'm, I was very encouraged when I heard this. Uh, and then look at it, then I say, hey, standard higher than me. Even the kid wants to go two weeks. Eh? I only plan for one week only this year. <laughs> Okay, but then whether two weeks or one week or that, that is a posturing, you know. You've you got to start thinking and planning one because it doesn't happen just like that. Alright, so that is a good posture to adopt. Okay, so apart from the family, how about individually? What does Jubilee mean to you? Okay, I, I can go first. Uh, for me, I believe um, this year will be a year that uh, God will restore to me lost, lost years. Um, I know that uh, nothing that we go through in life is wasted. But there, there is um, a part of me that really regrets how I spent a, a large part of the last 15 years of my life uh, in, on, on my career. I gave so much to it that I left barely anything, you know, for, for, to give to God to see how He can work with me. And um, so I, I, I gave so much of my energy to, to, to my workplace because I felt like, God, I must, I must glorify you in the workplace, you know. I must. Um, you, I want you to be proud of me, uh, but I, I realized actually I, I didn't really think whether that's what God really wanted. Did He really want me to? Did He really want um, me to do that? Was that what He He required of me? So going forward, I'm I'm looking forward to have a new attitude, which is to believe that um, in every area of my life there is a way to do and go about things that's God's way. And um, instead of uh, thinking through using my own plans and solutions to, to um, take time to seek God and listen for what is His way for this season in my life and then to give Him the prerogative, uh, to give Him the first rights for how I will spend my time in different areas of my life. Yes, so I'm, I'm reminded in Leviticus 25, Verse 20 to 21, actually the people said to God, how can we not plan for one whole year? What will we eat? And God said to them, I will command my blessing upon you and it, meaning the land. The land will produce uh, on the sixth year enough uh, food for three years. So um, I'm quite excited. I, I believe that um, as I do things God's way, He is going to redeem the time for me and give me, um, move me into the miraculous and I will see uh, fruit, fruit that is uh, miraculous. Yeah, how many of you want three years, three years, command the blessings of the land to sustain you, not only sustain you, to thrive for three years. How many of you want that? I want that. I say amen to that, right? I think for myself, when I was asking the, God, the Lord for a word, the words that came were broken dreams. And immediately I knew what that meant for me. Um, you know, when you are a young person or young Christian, right? Uh, you want to change the world for Jesus, right? You want to be like a world shaker and a history maker and do great things for Jesus. But then along the way, um, life gets busy, disappointments set in, discouragements come, and those dreams die, right? They, they die. 
And I felt that this year, that is something that God wants to revive. He wants to revive the broken dreams uh, that I have and maybe some of you have with regards to Him. And for Him to give us again the ability and the courage to dream again for Him, to be able to aspire to do great things for God. So honestly, I don't know how that's going to look like, um, in what shape or what form, but I'm just trusting God that if that's what He wants to uh, bring about in my life, that He will bring it to pass uh, somehow. Yeah. Amen, amen. So you see, when, when we, we, we coordinated this, uh, then my plan is after that, I pray for them. Uh. But after hearing what they say, I decide that uh, they pray for me uh, better. <laughs> okay? okay, so maybe they pray for all of us. I pray, pray with all of us that we will aspire more. We want more. That God, to believe that God really is the God of the so much more. Okay, Matt, can you pray? Uh, yeah, lead us to pray. Sure. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you for families. Thank you for instituting families. Like since the beginning of time, Lord, after the creation of the world, Lord, one of the first things that you established was that of families. And we believe that families have a very special place in your heart. And even today, Lord, we want to pray for every LSBC family, every person who is seated here today. Father, we ask of you, Lord, won't you grant us a vision for our family? Lord, once you deposit within our heart, tell us, Lord, what would you like to revive? What would you like to restore in our families, Lord, this year? Lord, that we will not be content, Lord, with just doing life the way we have been doing it in the routines of life, in the busyness of Singapore life. But Lord, to have that holy discontent to want to dare to seek you for more. So Father, I just want to pray, Lord, uh, even today, Lord, your deposit within each one of us, Lord, uh, a vision, a word, something, Lord, for us to take home with us and to pursue you with. And Father, I just want to pray even this year, Lord, for restoration in the families that may be going through a uh, financial situation, uh, broken relationships, maybe even broken dreams. Father, I just want to pray, Lord, this will be a year, Lord, where you bring restorations between and among all the families in LSBC, that collectively as one, Lord, as we come together, as many families coming together as one, we have a restored LSBC as well. So, Father, I just want to pray, Lord, even as we walk out of here later, Lord, you deposit that seed, Lord, within each and every one of our hearts, something that will germinate, uh, will take root and bear fruit within our lives for us to believe you for more in this Jubilee year. For we commit ourselves, we commit our families to you, for we pray all these things in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. 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 Thank you. Let's thank, thank you them so for their sharing. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Matt, Cynthia. So you see, brothers and sisters, uh, Matt, Cynthia, they've internalised and I've internalised what Jubilee means for me. I already said I don't want it just to be some celebration because it can and it will be a great thing also. But there can be so much more even as we believe that God can be so much more to us, in us, through us. So individually, you've got to do that internalization, that processing as well to listen to hear what God is saying, you need to come close and He will reveal to you. 2024 can be such a tremendous year of opportunity as you receive this word by faith. Okay? Receive the word by faith. And it starts with a decision to consecrate this year to God, to set it apart, to let it not be common. To don't live it now, do not live it as a common year. Okay, that's the first decision that we've got to make. So, I'm going to uh, give you some time. All right, so for those of you with your family, maybe you, you, you can pray together, or for some of you, you may want to pray yourself. Have a transaction with the Lord, talk to Him, ask Him. First thing you tell Him that, Lord, I don't know how to do it, but I want to come in, uh, consecrate the year. I want to consecrate the year, my life and the year to you and open up my eyes, my spiritual eyes, my spiritual ears to see, to hear what exactly you are saying that this year will be an extraordinary year, an extraordinary year of joy. Okay, I'm going to give you uh, probably three minutes or so. You can pray together or you can pray on your own. Okay, close your eyes, bow your heads, have that interaction with God.
sing a song and let us sing this song as a prayer as a response unto God to mean it when we sing it because a lot of time we sing because the song is like but we don't really mean it but this time around let this song be a prayer from our hearts even as we sing and let that be let this song be a posture of our heart as we approach 2024 come lead us I don't want to worship from afar Draw me closer to you It's my only desire You're the one that I've been looking for Let me tell in your presence To worship and adore Full on Lord, I'm yearning for you alone. Deep calls to deep, Lord, I know there must be more. Show me your face, so Make my heart pure.
hear our prayer. Let that be a prayer. A heart prayer, oh God. A posturing of our hearts, oh God. Lord, even as we enter into 2024. Lord, the trumpet has sounded in your scriptures says, oh God, on Jubilee year, even as a trumpet sound, oh God, that Jubilee starts, oh God. And I just sense, oh Lord, what you're saying, oh God, that is the trumpet is sounding in the spiritual realm, oh Father, that it is an awakening. It's supposed to awaken us, oh God. Awaken us to capture our attention because, oh Lord, our attention are all over, oh God. Lord, this day we pray, oh God, we will respond to that trumpet call, oh God, and we will orientate ourselves, oh God, towards you, oh God, towards what you are saying, towards what you are Ah, even shouting from the mountaintop from heaven, oh God. But your people, oh God, some of us cannot hear, oh God. So Lord, this day we pray for our spiritual ears and eyes, that our ears and eyes will be open, that our spirit will be open to receive, oh God. Receive your word, oh Father. Lord, let this not only be a few good moment that uh, we come, we feel good, we feel our hearts being tucked. Lord, that is, uh, this is a call to action, oh God. A call to action that we will reorientate, oh God. We will direct our bearing, oh God, to fulfill a higher call. Okay, that 2024 will be a purposeful year, it will be a joyful year, simply because, oh God, you've ordained it for us, oh Father. And you have set that cause for us, oh Father. So Lord, we want to encounter more of you in this year. We pray, oh God, once again, that you will heighten our spiritual senses, that we will understand your guidance, oh God. We pray, oh God, we will listen, listen. And Father, that the, the, is a word here that you've given me, oh God, and the, 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 the three words are stubborn, old, stubborn ways, oh God that many of us have set in our mind certain impressions, certain ideas, certain philosophies, and those things govern our life and we hold it so stubbornly that even when you come and say, we refuse to budge because of pride, because of this, because of that, whatever the reason is. So Lord, we pray against all stubborn ideas that is inside our hearts, inside our mind. We come against it in the name of Jesus. It is a new year and therefore, God, Lord, we pray that we will be open. We will be open to what you have to say. We will be open to new things that you will say for us, oh God, in us, oh Father, that we will not just uh, insist on our old stubborn ways. So we commit our year 2024 into your hands. In Jesus' name, we pray and all of God's people say, Amen, Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, I've got a bit more. Can you please sit down? All right. We've received the Word of God and these are seeds, seeds planted into our hearts. So right now, the next step is to prayerfully, prayerfully cultivate it so that it will grow. You know, uh, if we are not careful, when we walk out of here, the birds of the air, the Bible says, the birds of the air will come. They will steal the seeds. Okay. When you walk out of here, some of you, as you talk about things, right, some of you will start saying things like, hey, Tsun Bo, correct or not, are you sure? All these words, right, will cause the seeds to be stolen. Okay? So guard your words. Speak words of hope. Speak words of faith. Talking about hope on Friday when we were praying as leaders, right? The Lord showed me that he, what He has planted in our hearts 
are seeds of hope. Because previously, died, many, many things die already, you know, so no hope, right? But what God will plant and has planted are seeds of hope. So we got to guard it, we got to water it, all right? We pray that it will grow, it will grow, and it will grow in 2024. Some of you here may not understand. You are a visitor, you are uh, a non believer, you, are, you, you do not know what we fully talking about, but if Whatever we said today spoke to your heart, you know, something warm, something is there, something is stirring, and you want to know more, later on, come forward, right? Come forward. Uh, I'll, I'll meet with you and we can talk about knowing, knowing what we are talking about and you can enjoy Jubilee's blessing for your life as well. Visitors as well, because you are in the land, all right? You don't belong to this church, but you are in the land. Jubilee is for the land. Because you're in the land, you will benefit from Jubilee's blessings as well. Okay? Then, for the rest of us, okay, members, church, in the church, all that, we need to prepare. All right? And that's why there's the 14 days of prayer foundation. We've said today is the beginning. We will pray more. All right? There are two weeks. Instead of one week, we have set aside two weeks because if you see, it is about hearing God. Jubilee is customized. This is like customized journey, you know, customized tour. All right, that the Lord will speak to you specifically the area that needs to be reset, the areas that need to be forward, revive, redeem, rejuvenate. A lot of re's lah. So what re is there for you? You've got to listen, and then God will unfold it. So through these fourteen days, we prepare scriptures, devotions, all that. Every day it will be sent to you. Pray. Ask God, talk to Him, pray for the church so that Jubilee's blessings, we can invoke Jubilee's blessings for all of us, for the church, for the community, that more will benefit from it. Apart from that, then the next Tuesdays, two Tuesdays and two Fridays, there'll be prayer meetings. In these prayer meetings, we have set aside time for us to listen to God so that it will be clearer. All right? I said there is a call to action. So it's not a feeling thing. Because you walk out here, the feeling can go away. Okay? But we need to build convictions when we come together as we hear, as we listen to God, as God speaks to your heart. Conviction will develop and those convictions will cause us to want to walk. Walk with confidence. Walk with trust. Walk in faith with God. So I'm challenging you to come Tuesdays and Fridays. The first one will be coming Tuesday, okay? Coming Tuesday, come meet us, meet us at L4 and then we will pray together and we will seek His face and God will reveal His face to us, okay? Must come. And I will say this now, I know a lot of you are very busy and some of you are very tired and that's why you must come. Right, isn't it? We got it all wrong, you know. We stay away from such meeting because we are tired, we are too busy. Precisely, the year is busy. Okay? The year is busy. So much things to do. You need God. We need God. Come, seek the Lord. Okay? Friday, no excuse. We all sell meetings. I have been replaced already. All must come, okay? And then those who are parents, no excuse also because why? Children, church also doing prayer foundation. We are telling the kids what is important. So, if our kids are 4 to 11, come, there will be a prayer foundation for the kids so you can concentrate on praying here. They can concentrate on praying and having fun over at the children's church. Alright? And then, for those in the cells, your ZPs also have got certain days set aside for you to pray. Okay? Let us consecrate the year to God. Okay? We're coming to the end. Alright? I'm going to... Uh, uh, pronounce the benediction soon. But I just sense a few things uh, and I think uh, maybe I will give you an opportunity to respond. So, uh, later on, uh, if the Lord has spoken to you, you feel a tugging in your heart, there are certain things that you want to process with God, okay? Maybe I can invite you to come forward. Uh, the, 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 the rest who has to go, uh, you go, can go after the benediction, but for some of you, who wants a prayer? Who wants a bit more? Who feels a bit stuck? Especially 
there are some who are very, very tired, weary. Have, year haven't started, or year started, just started only, you're tired already. How to walk, right? That the Lord can bless you, can strengthen you, can give you rest, restedness and strength, okay? So, those of you in this category and you need uh, time, we will pray, we will pray with you here. You can come forward after the benediction, okay? If not, then please stand. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. This day, this week, this month, this year, and forevermore. We thank you, Lord, for your blessings. In Jesus' name, we pray. In... Amen, amen. Let's give the Lord a praise offering.